Hi guys, in this video we're going to go through the um, extrusion exercise in the creating parts and features uh, part of the learning path. So um, we'll jump right in. So the first thing they ask you to do is to start a new design and to create a sketch on the top plane and to make sure that everything is set to millimeters. So uh, I've got my design started here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead double check my workspace units so they're set to millimeters which is what I want and I'm going to create a new sketch on the top plane um, and I can see that sketch show up on there I'm going to hide all those um, orthogonal planes so I'm going to press P on my keyboard to hide those and I'm going to look right at the top plane there. okay I think I'm all set let's go on to the next step the next step asks us to um, create this so uh, we've got a construction line here coming off of the origin and some concentric circles um, on the left and right in the center. We have a center rectangle here. Um, all these are concentric, all these are concentric. It looks like these are tangent, um, but uh, we don't know that yet. So we'll just go ahead as if, as if they're not. So uh, draw the two circles in the middle first and the rectangle and then I'll place the other circles up here. So let's start by creating my construction line. So I'll turn on construction and I'll start my line. I'll come right off the origin here, come straight up. And then uh, I'll draw a couple of circles. Circle, turn my construction off. Circle here, and then a circle here. And then I want to put that center rectangle in there. That. I just a couple of circles out here. Um, it looks like those are going to be lined up. So if I careful where I select, I could line that up already. Circle here and here, and then I get another circle here and here. Okay, and then I'll draw some lines uh, coming off of there. That line is not where I want it to be. So I'll go back up here. Draw that line again. Line on that object and on this object. On this object and on this object. Here, here. Whoops, going too fast there. Line from here to here. And I'm just pressing L to start that line command. So using that keyboard shortcut. L here to here. Okay. So I think I've got a geometry there. It doesn't look exactly like what they have there, but I think we'll be cleaning that up in the next part. Um, so I've got circles on either side. I've got a line down the center. So let's go to the next part. So now we're going to add those tangent constraints. So I want uh, this line and this uh, circle to be tangent. And same thing all around here. So let's add those tangent constraints. So I'll come up here to my tangent constraints. And I want those two to be tangent. Notice that moves a little bit when I do that. These to be tangent, these to be tangent. Here, here, here. Okay, I think I've got all those tangencies there. I can show constraints there and just make sure I've got those. Um, I see tangent, tangent. There's tangents there, there's tangents between here and here. I think we're good there. The next step, we want to make sure um, that the center points uh, and the construction lines are um, symmetric. Okay. So uh, we'll come here, we'll choose the symmetric and here. Here, and here, and here. 
and my little wheel here is spinning. So I'll wait for that to finish up there. Check my constraints here. Make sure I've got a symmetric here. And I've got, uh, yeah, so it looks good. So on to the next one. Um, so now we can start putting dimensions in here. When I start putting the dimensions in here, I'm going to see right away if my constraints um, are set up properly. Um, they should be equally spaced and symmetrical about the center line. Um, these parts uh, should have the same um, dimensions. And so we'll go ahead and place those. So 20 and 35 on the left hand side. So I'm going to close my constraints. I'm going to place some dimensions. And 35. So notice when I change those, the tangents um, changed. And this diameter changed, but this one did not. So um, I want to make sure I put an equal constraint on these. I want this and this to be equal to each other. Oops. Not parallel but equal right here. Here we go, equal to each other. So I want this one and this one to be equal to each other. And likewise, I want this one and this one to be equal to each other. So there we go. So that's the behavior that I want to see there. Okay, so we'll finish adding these, uh, 35 and 70. So go back to dimensions. So we've got a 70 here. And Let's go back here and fix this one first. Oops, dimension. 35, there we go. And 70, oops. 70, better. And then we'll add this dimension and this should pull everything in. So I'm going to dimension from this side over to this side. And I want that to be 250. So that's looking a little bit better. And then we'll add the dimension here to the rectangle. So 45 and 10. And so we'll place our dimension here. This is 45. And this is 10. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's move on to the next step. Um, we want to make sure that that sketch is fully constrained here before we move on. And we, we can tell that it is. Um, because we can see all those lines are black. There's no more blue lines on there. Um, and in fact, uh, if I come here and delete this, um, you see that that turns blue and it's uh, no longer fully constrained. So it doesn't have everything it needs to fully define and draw uh, that geometry. So we'll go ahead and place that back on there. And we kept that 250 dimension. So I think we're all set to go. Okay, so next step, we're gonna go ahead and complete that sketch and then we're gonna do an extrusion. So let's complete the sketch first of all. I'm gonna switch back to um, an isometric view so I can see this a little bit better. And then um, I'm gonna create an extrude feature with a depth of 40. And you see that I'm gonna extrude this right hand side of it. Um, notice that in my sketch that uh, there's still just a box running through there. It's not like trimmed out or anything like that, but um, Onshape will actually see that that is a closed area and it will extrude that closed area. So we're gonna exclude that to a depth of 40. And so we're gonna go new, blind, and 40 on that. So we'll create an extrusion. We'll pick here and here and here. And so we can see that pulling out. And that's the shape that we want there. Okay, and so we want that depth to be 40. And so we, we've, we've included those three faces in there. And so it's merged all those faces together. Again, you see it trimmed out this portion in the center here because it wasn't part of that closed area. Um, so we should be all set to go there. Uh, and this is okay in here. Okay, and then we'll move on to the next step. We'll create a second um, extrusion, this time with the left-hand side of the part here. So we're gonna come up 25 millimeters and include just those two faces on the left-hand side. So uh, I'll create a new extrude and um, 
you notice that it's not showing me that sketch, so I'm gonna turn on that sketch just so I can see that a little easier. So I'm gonna click here and here, make sure that I can see both of those things. I'm gonna to go to a depth of 25, um, and it's just gonna be those two faces there. So I've got two faces of blind to a 25. So, okay, so I click it there. Okay, so now we've created that part. Um, and so you can see we've got two extrusions down there and those two extrusions together make a single part. And so we're gonna rename that part. So if I right click on this and choose rename, um, they want us to call that part uh, bracket. And so we'll call that bracket. And then we'll assign a material of steel 1020 um, to the bracket. And so let me come over here to uh, right click here, assign material. And we're going to use uh, 1020. So steel 1020 is going to be what we use there. We'll assign that to it. And so that will. Um, help us calculate the material properties of it. So how much does it weigh? What kind of density is it? Um, centers of mass and that sort of stuff. So uh, we get that. And then we'll go on to the last step, which is we want to look at the mass properties of this. Now in the mass properties, notice that they're showing this as kilograms. So in my um, settings here, I want to make sure that my workspace units are the default mass units are set to kilograms. And then um, I'll go ahead and pick this part right here. And then down here, you see the little scale here. These are my material or my mass properties. And so if I click on that, I can see the mass of that there uh, in kilograms. Okay. And then I can use that to go ahead and finish off the design. Okay. And so the next step will ask you to go through and verify those mass properties and that you got them um, the same and uh, your drawing looks good. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.